Thank you for clicking on the video today, everybody. What I want to teach you in this mini series is how to get your foot in the door with Blender. I think that Blender is one of the most amazing softwares out there. And what I found so incredible about it is that the reason why I use it is ArchViz. And I was using SketchUp and Lumion before I got into Blender. The thing that made me feel like I really could understand Lumion was just learning Blender. And that may sound weird, but you'll be exposed to so many cool things that you honestly had no idea existed, or you'll be able to build on a passion that you already had once you start using Blender. I only started using it back in April of 2020 at the beginning of COVID, but it only took my firm three or four months to be comfortable enough with it that we're actually using it full time for our interior renders. If you don't do ArchViz, that's not a problem at all. This is a Blender tutorial for anyone that wants to learn how to actually get started in the software. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy the series and I hope you'll stick around. One of the most important things that you need to know in Blender is how to actually move objects around. So the first thing that we're going to do when it comes to modeling is I'm going to delete the camera and the light because we don't need that until a future part. And I'm going to click on the cube. Now, if you hit G, you can move this cube around. If you hit R, you can rotate it. And if you hit S, you can scale it. The problem I have with this is just by hitting G, R, or S is you're moving it on all axes. So what I find is actually the best is if you want to move this object over here, hit G, X, move it. If you want to move it back, hit G and X. If you want to move it over here, you hit G and Y. G and Y. Move this back. And if you want to move it up, you go G and Z, G and Z. Okay, so what you can do then if you want to move it over here, G X, G Y. Now this is the way that I find I'm going to hit control Z just to go back. This is the way that I find it works best. I have seen some people just kind of move around like this, but it's not as precise. The same thing goes for rotating it. If you hit rotate, it's just going around in this you know, these crazy circles, and it's not actually doing what you want. So if you hit R and X, it rotates kind of like it has a skewer through it. Same with R and Y, and then R and Z. With the scale, it will just scale it along this one axis. So if I hit S and X, it scales. I'm just hitting escape, by the way, and it just resets the transformation that you had. S and Y, S and Z. Those are the very basic transformations of Blender. And you will be using these a lot. This is something that you really want to get down. The really being able to move it along the axes, though, that really, really helps. And it's something that I recommend you start doing right from the beginning, especially if you're doing ArchViz, which I know how important it is for that. So the next thing I want to teach you about is edit mode and object mode. This is this one is probably the one that really messes with people's brains when they first start with Blender. So right now we are in object mode. And you can actually look up in the top left and see object mode. I'm going to hit shift A to add in another cube. And then I'm going to hit G and Y just to move it over. Now, you can see that I'm actually selecting these individually. If you hit tab, I'm now in edit mode. But what's important to understand is that I'm in the edit mode of this cube right here. I can't click anywhere on this other cube. And you can also see up here that it now says edit mode. However, if I click on one of the vertices here and I hit G, then I can deform the cube, hit tab, and then I'm back into the object mode. And I can now select this again. So I'm going to go back into this mode. I'm going to hit G and Z, or sorry, G and Y to move it, G and Z to move it down. The cube's not going to be perfectly shaped, but that's fine. Now, what I was doing here is I was grabbing the vertices of this cube. But there's actually three different selection modes that you can have inside of edit mode. And again, I know this sounds weird. Trust me, it's you get the hang of it very quick. It's just very hard to wrap your head around when you first start. If you hit one, you can grab all of the corners of this cube. So you'll see little black dots. If you hit two, I'm now in edge mode. And I can actually select the spaces in between those vertices like so and if you hit three you go into face mode 
So now I can grab the faces, move them around as I need. And that is how you edit individual objects. But as you can see, I can't select anything over here with this cube because I'm not in the edit mode of that object. So if I hit tab, I go back into object mode. I click on the other cube. I hit tab and now I can't select the one that we were just editing because now I'm in the edit mode for this cube. This is this is something, as I said, is very, very strange. There's one more thing I want to show you with this, just in case people don't get stuck on this in a future part of this tutorial, because this is one that I know absolutely gets beginners. If you go into the object mode, you can also just do a drop down here, by the way. But if I hit shift A again and I generate a cube, I hit G and Z and I move it over here. This cube is its own object. You can see how there's now a cube dot zero zero two over here. If I click on this cube here and I go into edit mode and now I hit shift A and I create another cube. See how there's no new cube that was created. That's because this cube is inside of this larger cube. They're now one object. If I hit tab, you can see that they're both getting highlighted. It's really, really weird when you first start using Blender because you're just like, oh, I'll make a cube. And then you can't figure out why this cube is inside of this other cube. And this is one that I really wanted to drill home with people because I think that this is one of the, the problems that really get people because if you don't fully understand object in edit mode, it just seems like things are kind of meshing together for no real reason. If you do mess this up, all you have to do is hover over one of these cubes. I find that hitting three to go into face mode works best with this. Just hover over it. You don't need to have your hand clicked or anything like that on the mouse and just hit the L button. It's going to do a linked select, which means that everything in that cube is going to be selected. Then you hit P and the separate tab comes up. Just hit selection. And now you see that the cube appears up here. And now we can click them individually. If I hit tab, we're in the edit mode for this. If I hit tab, we're in the edit mode for this. And if I shift left click these, so these are both selected, this is the the one with the light orange is the active one. So that's like the, the priority one, but this is still selected. So if I hit tab, now these are still two different objects, but I can edit them both. I know that this is a really, really weird part. And I know that um, it might seem like you kind of just got thrown in the fire, but trust me, this will make more sense as we get going. And if you have to even watch this part a few times, I recommend you do it because it's once you get the idea of how object and edit mode works, you'll really like it. It's just at the beginning, it can be really, really frustrating to learn it. The next small thing that we're going to learn is how to make a loop cut. It's pretty simple. The easiest way of saying it is that it's just going to almost cut the object in half. And all you have to do is inside of edit mode, you just click control and R when you're hovered over an object. So without clicking anything, you can see these yellow lines. If I move up here, you can see how it's moving around like that. If I just click right here, it's going to create edges. And with that, you could grab this and move it out. It just gives you more geometry to play with. It also creates vertices right on the corners there. So yeah, it's just, it's easier to maneuver that around. What's kind of interesting too, is you can actually go control R to do a loop cut. And if you scroll up with your mouse, again, you don't want to click. You don't want to hit control R, click, and then try and scroll up because that won't work. You want to hit control R and then scroll up without clicking anything or scroll down. You can actually choose how much geometry is being created with the loop cut. Once you do that, you can start to do some pretty cool stuff with it. One of the last things I want to teach you before we get into actually creating our barrel is how to bevel edges. So let's click on one of the cubes here, hit tab. Now we're going to hit two to go into edge mode. So we want to have these selected and let's just maneuver over here and we're going to hold shift and we're going to left click, left click, left click, holding them in so that we select multiple. You could also just hit three and click on the face. I'm just trying to get people a little comfortable with doing it uh, multiple ways, I guess. Once we have all this selected, I recommend you put your mouse right about here on the face, hit control B, and then just start to slowly drag it out. And you're going to see that the face is the way that I would describe it is it's taking one edge and it's splitting it into two edges. It's not quite that simple, but I guess that that's probably the easiest way to describe it to a beginner. And you can actually scroll up on this. So now there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it's it's still creating that corner, except now it's making it so that there's a curve of, say, 10 edges 
leading up to the top part instead of just the one. And this is something that really helps bring realism, not only to Archviz scenes, but just really any kind of model. You don't want to have these extremely sharp edges because in the real world, you don't get things that are that sharp. It just, it's impossibly sharp and the eye can actually detect it. And it does, I find it sometimes actually makes even light look weird on it because it's like these hard shadows. So this is a really cool tool to have and we'll get more into that, but I just wanted to quickly show that. One small thing that I also think is really, really easy for beginners to get messed up with is this 3D cursor here. So this 3D cursor is where if you create a new object, it is going to spawn. There are a lot more things that this cursor is used for. And at first I thought that this was one of the dumbest things in Blender. I just, I didn't get why this was in there. It seemed very clunky because I was coming from SketchUp and there's nothing like this. But once you really start using Blender and you understand how it works, it's an incredibly powerful tool. And I'm really glad that it is in Blender. The way that I would move it around is just shift, right click. Oops, sorry. Shift, right click. And then now you can see that the 3D cursor is sitting on the face here. If you put it off over here, it can kind of mess it up. So I always like to try and put it onto like a plane or a cube or something, and that's going to work better. So if I now add in a new primitive or a mesh, I'll hit shift a, I'll go mesh plane. And then you can see that the plane is actually spawned on top of this cube. The last part that I want to go over before we get into actually creating our barrel is the four modes of blender. There is solid mode, wireframe mode, material preview mode, and rendered mode. Right now we're in solid mode. This doesn't load any textures in, so it's very easy on your GPU when it comes to actually loading textures. And it's really just focusing on the actual models. If I hold Z, it brings up this menu. So let's take a look at wireframe. In this mode, we can see the shape of all of our objects and we can see all that extra geometry that was added into this cube inside or when we were using the loop cuts. If you hold Z and go back to solid mode, when you're looking at it in this view, you don't see that extra geometry. So this this cube here could actually have a million faces on it or a million triangles, something like that. Whereas this one only has six. So this solid mode is a great tool, but you can't always tell how much geometry is in there. And you definitely can't tell how the textures are going to look. If you want to see how the textures look, you go to material preview mode. I'm not going to get too far into this right now because there are no materials on this. And I also don't want to get into doing that right now until we get to the appropriate part. And the other part that I just want to show you is I'm going to hit shift a, I'm going to add in a light, I'm just going to pull this up. Now I'm going to hold Z and go into rendered mode. And when you do this, you are going to get a small light over here. But we're going to turn this up quickly. And don't worry too much about this. I just kind of want to show you how this works. This is actually ray traced. But you'll see a much more you know, interesting example. This is just a bunch of gray blocks. Nothing's fun about that. If there are certain parts you are confused about, I do recommend just going and watching that part again. However, we're going to be going through it fairly slow once we start doing the barrel. So don't worry too much about it. I will also answer any questions that you have as fast as I possibly can. So don't hesitate to ask them. There's no stupid questions. We'll get you back on track. With that, though, I think that we are good to start part one, and that is going to be the modeling portion of our barrel tutorial. The second part is going to be texturing and just getting it set up. The third one is going to focus on rendering. So we're going to add in an HDRI. We're going to add in the lighting, and maybe we'll even duplicate the barrels around a couple of times to give it a pretty cool effect. So I really hope that everyone stays around to the end of this tutorial because I really think I can help you get started with Blender. I hope you enjoy.